Welcome to Never a Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if they are telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And this is another video on the Sophie Toscan Duplantier murder. Um, it's a, I've made a lot of videos on this, so if you want the background to this horrific murder to which no one has ever been held accountable, then check out some of those other videos where there's a bit more background here. Um, but we're going to look at Jules Thomas, ex of Ian Bailey, who today, as I record this, has given an interview to a paper about the cold case review. Uh, this has just happened today. I haven't had a lot of time to study the words, but I'll uh, be going through it and maybe noticing things as I go through it. But she's got a lot of interesting things to say. So she has given this interview to the, as published in the Sunday World website. The headline there, Ian Bailey's ex brands Garda cold case review into Sophie's murder, a stitch up. If you like this video, if you get something from it, I would really appreciate you pressing that like button. It takes two seconds and it helps other people find this content. I'm also interested in anything you have to say on this, any observations, any suggestions, or any questions that you have as well, stick them in the comments. And if you think you know people who would be interested in hearing a bit more about this, then share it with them. Please feel free to share it. As always, it might look a bit pedantic as I go through the words, but the words that we choose to use reveal a lot about our inner thoughts and feelings. So let's go through this. Now, I like to deal with whole quotes from someone, but there's one quote that's in uh, a write-up, a journalist part, that I'm really interested in. So the article starts with the journalist saying, the former lover of Ian Bailey has branded the whole Garda cold case review into Sophie Toscan de Plantier's murder as a stitch-up. The first thing I will say for anyone who's not familiar with this is the Garda or the Gardaí uh, Gardai that we're going to talk about. That is the police force in Ireland. Um, and so this is the journalist's words, apart from the ones that he's put in quotes here, a uh, stitch-up. Now, for... There's no context around that, but to use the phrase a stitch up, Jules must think that a stitch up is occurring. So who's being stitched up? Well, um, let's face it. Um, if it's someone she doesn't know who's done this murder, then how could they be being stitched up? How would she know they were being stitched up? Why would she care that they are being stitched up? Um, so I'm really interested in why she picked the words stitch up out there. Does she know more? about this cold case review than anyone else because all we've got in this cold case review, it's been building up. They, you know, We've heard they might be close to making an arrest. We've heard they've spoken to some interesting witnesses. So what does she know? Does she know more? And is that why she is saying it's a stitch up? We don't know, but the fact that she is quoted as saying it's a stitch up really interests me. Now, these are all Jules' direct quotes from, from here on in. The Garde are not interested in the truth, says Jules. When it comes to this case, and never have been. They have spent millions and have got nowhere. The truth. What is the truth? And why does she phrase it as the truth? Why isn't she saying the Guardi are not interested in finding the killer? Why doesn't she say the Guardi are not interested in justice for Sophie? Or finding out what happened? Just the truth truth the truth what what exactly is your definition Jules of the truth that the Guardian are not interested in why have you picked that word and never have been so Jules ex-partner has been under suspicion by a lot of people including at one time the the, the police force um so this seems to be referring to that um, because at the very um, start of it um, Jules was arrested and um, her partner Ian was arrested so is this what the what she means by the truth? Because she says, and never have been, which means from the very start. And then she says, they have spent millions and have got nowhere, um, which is, well, how does she know? How does she know where they've got again? You know, this cold case review is going on. There's been very little official words as far as I know. So how does she know they've got nowhere? The only thing I would say is Jules, and a lot of this does go to kind of cliche, almost saying the things that someone might be expected to say, especially if you've got a bad view of the Guardi. So maybe this is just her saying, what are words I can use to have a go at these people I really don't like because they've made my life a misery for ages. Ha! The police, they've got nowhere. More from Jules. From day one, they were given loads of leads from various witnesses, and for whatever reason, they never followed them up. Now, this is factually a lie. 
because we know the police have followed up loads of leads from various witnesses. And they followed them up on all sorts of ways, but especially ones about Ian Bailey. Um, so for her to say they were given loads of leads from various witnesses and for whatever reason they never followed them up is not true. What she means, but what she can't say because she doesn't have the genuine authentic words to reflect this in her language, she means they were given leads and witnesses who say that someone else apart from Ian was involved in this and she thinks the police never followed them up. You just look at how vague this is. Loads of leads. What does that mean? What, you know, what is loads of leads? If you're the police, uh, does five leads? Is that loads? Um, is 100 loads? She do we don't know. She doesn't say. She can't quantify it because it's not really that real. Various witnesses, again, what does that mean? Various witnesses. It's very vague. Loads of leads, various witnesses. And for whatever reason, again, th that's just so vague um, beyond time. And they never followed them up. Well, as we've said, Jules, that isn't true. She then says, if they go and seek the truth, the French will go ballistic, and that is why it has never happened. The whole investigation is a cover-up. So this is where I think we have this whole investigation as a cover-up. Again, this is just talking in really broad terms. She doesn't say what they're covering up, you know, like, uh, and, and she doesn't know, because she's going to say the police have not spoken to her, so she doesn't know anything about this cold case investigation. So she doesn't know that it's a cover-up. So why why is she saying these things that she has no proof and she offers no proof for this? She doesn't say what it's covering up. She doesn't say how she knows the whole investigation is a cover up. So she has no proof for any of this. Why is she saying this stuff that is not true and doesn't mean anything? And again, if they go and seek the truth, the French will go ballistic. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? The truth is there again. Not if they go and seek the killer. Not if they go and seek to solve who murdered Sophie. No, if they go and seek the truth. Why does she keep going to that phrase, the truth? It's just rubbish. It really is, Jules. Rubbish. I'm sorry, I might get angry about this because some of the stuff that's said by Ian Bailey and by Jules Thomas is it's despicable, really. Calm down. She now talks about Ian Bailey. They split up, what was it, 2022, I think. She says, I have nothing to do with Ian. I do not speak to him. He is living his life and I am getting on with mine. Now, this is interesting and it tells us a lot about uh, what's going on in Joel's head. So, I have nothing to do with Ian. That doesn't mean that Ian has nothing to do with her. If you know what I mean, she doesn't say we have nothing to do with each other. Just, I have nothing to do with Ian. And even then, what does nothing to do mean? I have nothing to do with the guy that serves me a coffee every morning, but he does serve me coffee every morning. We do interact. We do have a conversation. Um, so what does she exactly mean by I have nothing to do with Ian? And why is it not we have nothing to do with each other? The exact same here. I do not speak to him. What does she mean by that? Um, does he speak to her? She doesn't say. Do they text? You know, that, that would be not speaking. It's, it's strangely qualified. And then this, the ordering in this is says a lot about Joe's. He is living his life and I am getting on with mine. Now, it's the ordering here. Ian Bailey's mentioned first. He is living his life and I am getting on with mine. And Jules has always appeared quite subservient to Ian Bailey. Sometimes he's done horrible, horrible things to her. I'm not having a go at her. I'm only stating what I see as a fact that she is putting him before her still. He is living his life. I am getting on with mine. And a bit of a difference as well. He's living his life. She's just getting on with hers. He's living his life. What does that mean? Why are you just getting on with yours? More from Jules. I cannot believe that the Guardi have not been in touch with me. You would think they would. Well, number one, at the end there, you would think they would, not she thinks they would. She was expecting them to be in touch or, or anything like that. Just you over there, you. You would think that the Guardi would be in touch with her. Um, but um, what she's saying, if we took her at face value, if we took what her intention was, is that the truth is over there. It's nothing to do with her and Ian, that someone murdered um, Sophie and the police should be following those leads. Well, if that's the case, why would they want to talk to Jules? She's saying, I know nothing about this murder. I don't know who did it. 
why the hell, if they're doing what you want them to do, Jules, why would they be talking to you? They, they wouldn't need to talk to you if they'd found one of these leads and followed it up and were um, close to arresting a mysterious German person or someone from the other end of Ireland. They would have no need to speak to Jules Thomas. So why is she expecting them to speak to her? Actually, what you know, I cannot believe means, you know, I can't believe they haven't spoken to me. But actually, maybe you would be delighted that they haven't spoken to you. They're doing a cold case review. And for whatever reason, it seems to be that they don't want to talk to me. They are interested in other people and other people around me. Interesting. She says, this whole Sophie case is like a black cloth hanging over your head. It just never goes away. Um, and once again, she's not talking about herself. She doesn't say this whole Sophie case is like a black cloth hanging over my head head it just never goes away it's hanging over your head sometimes people use that to make us realize what it feels like you know this is what it feels this is what you would feel like if you were in my situation but she's not talking personally there it, it interesting she does refer to sophie as sophie um and i have heard her call i have heard jules call sophie that woman sometimes but she is quite often does refer to her by name, giving her some respect, I think. Um, and also, when people refer to people by name, I wouldn't say there's a closeness there, there, but maybe it does show a respect for the person that Sophie was. Uh, more from Jules. The truth is, Ian had nothing to do with this murder, and I have only ever told the truth. What do I see here um, is that she does refer to it as a murder. She doesn't downplay it and say this thing or this attack or um, what happened. She comes out and uses the full, hard, severe word for it, murder. Unlike other people who are sometimes guilty of crimes or being involved in crimes will play it down with the language and say something like, yeah, I didn't do it, rather than I didn't murder anyone. So that's that's there. But then we have the truth. Again, it comes out twice. The truth is, Ian had nothing to do with this murder, and I have only ever told the truth. Now, I'm always wary about when people say, I'm telling the truth. Honestly, this is what happened. Uh, truth to tell, this is what, swear to God, this is what happened. When people say that, I'm, ask, I'm like, why are you so keen to tell me you're telling the truth? Have you a habit of lying? Have you lied before and now this is something that's true and you really want me to believe it? But twice here she tells us what I am saying is the truth. That's trying too hard. Truthful people don't feel the need to persuade you that they're telling you the truth because it's just the truth to them. But here she tells twice the truth is and I've only ever told the truth. Um, so, she's, you know, if she just said Ian had nothing to do with this murder, I would take that i would say that's a fairly straightforward truthful statement but to, to tell us twice that it is the truth that she is talking puts me on red alert and if you've watched any of my videos or any of my content on the sophie toscan de plantier murder you will know that had nothing to do with this murder is something that jules and ian say regularly not i didn't do it it wasn't me but I had nothing to do with this murder is a common, common phrase that comes out of them all the time and had nothing to do with this murder is just a very interesting, qualified way of talking to about it. The review team is not interested in what I have to say. Otherwise, they would have contacted me. Again, she seems so, you know, um, again, if they were following the leads and it was someone else and it was far away, they were talking about it, then that it wouldn't be they're not interested in what I have to say. It would be they don't want to talk to me. It'd be, you know, um, they are following other leads, but it's I'm not interested in what I have to say. That's the phrase you would use if they just they don't believe there's any use in talking to you because you're just going to give the same bull that you've ever given i'm not saying that's what's happened here in jill's case i'm just saying that's the phrase oh, she's not interested in talking to me or think about it i'm not interested in talking to him because i'll just get the same old crap all the time that's when you use that phrase the review team is not interested in what i have to say otherwise they would have contacted me so that's what jules has said in that interview what are my conclusions well um, it feels to me like she has some insight into this cold case review um, that she, 
I mean, this could be insight in that they have spoken to her or she's had um, a whisper of what's going on with them or she's got a fear of what's going on with them. Just in her mind, she's come to this place. But it feels to me like she is worried about this cold case review. She has disdain for the police. You know, they, they she puts them down several times in what she says. Um, um, that, yeah, I, th I, I think either she's got some foresight into what is going to happen. And I wonder why that is. Um, I wonder why she keeps talking about the truth um, coming out because mm, I'm just, I'm really interested in why that is. But I don't like that interview at all. Um, she makes assertions that she cannot back up, that she doesn't back up. Um, and that, that repetition of the truth really, really worries me. I think, I think something big is coming in this cold case review and Jules knows it. What that something is, I don't know, but I think something is coming. If you like this, please press that like button in front of you. That would be great. Really would help the channel out. Comments, always happy to hear them, especially any observations, questions, or just fighting with me, tell me why you think I'm wrong would be great. And if you like this video and you think other people would, then feel free to share it. If you are interested in the whole Sophie Toscan de Plantier story, then there is a podcast at podcast.neveratruerword.com. This is called The Words of West Cork, and it goes into the words of people at the centre of the case, including Jules Thomas in great detail and her ex-partner Ian Bailey too. And if you like this, there's more videos for you. Uh, videos.neveratruerword.com.